Good afternoon. Donald Trump said uh, 200 times as a candidate and as president that Mexico would pay for his beloved wall. We have yet to see the first peso. Fast forward to March 2019. Now the president is saying that Mexico is off the hook. The American military will pay for his grandiose scheme. This attempt to shortchange our military for the president's political agenda is outrageous. So Senator Schatz, Senator Reid, and I, along with all of the Democratic members of our respective subcommittees and committees, sent a letter to Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan requesting a timely report on the impact of the president's decision. We think the Pentagon has to come clean with the winners and losers in this process and what the impact will be on our military and their families. We estimate that the Pentagon will be forced to delay 20 percent, one out of five, of the military construction projects in order to generate the $3.6 billion the President is asking for. We have a list of all of the projects, and virtually every senator, every senator of both political parties has a specific interest in the outcome. At risk are nearly 400 projects in 43 states, plus projects in the District of Columbia, Guam, and more than a dozen overseas locations, including those uh, locations with our allies, such as the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy. A year ago, the Pentagon came to Congress and claimed that these very same projects, which are on the chopping block, were the highest priority and provided us justification for the military need to spend taxpayers' dollars. Now, these same projects are being pushed aside and sacrificed for the President's political stunt. Let me give you some examples. The Marines need a new rifle range at Paris Island in South Carolina, a base training 20,000 new Marines each year. Our Special Forces need a training center at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, for training and injury prevention. Currently, they're using an old warehouse. Apparently, the readiness issue can wait on these projects when it comes to the president. Oh, and there's one other we should mention that happens to be in the state of Kentucky. Fort Campbell, Kentucky needs a new middle school for military families. The current building has been around for over 50 years. Apparently, that may be on the chopping block as well. Should any of these military priorities be put on hold for the president's pet project? No. If the pre is the president's wall an emergency? No way. Think about this. Over the last two years, we've given this president the authority to build 120 miles of new and replacement fencing along our border. How much has been built so far? None. It takes some time to do this. America's military has always brought us together, Democrats and Republicans. I hope my colleagues will join us in voting down this raid on the resources of our men and women in uniform. Senator Jack Reed. Thank you, Dick. It's a pleasure to be here with Senator Durbin and Senator Schatz. Uh, the President continues to mislead the Americans about his latest uh, border policy. For weeks, the President toyed with the idea of declaring a national emergency to circumvent Congress for a border wall, uh, but there's no credible argument for it. If you can spend weeks and weeks debating whether there's an emergency, it, by definition, it's not an emergency. And then, if he wants to look at the uh, Congress, we consider this emergency in the context of the appropriations bill, and 84 senators on a bipartisan basis rejected the wall. 84 senators went ahead and provided funding for border security, including technology, staffing, and some fencing. But on a bipartisan basis, there was no sense of emergency. And never in our history has a president declared a national emergency to avoid circumvent Congress for a construction project that previously failed to get authorized. And let me reiterate what Senator Durbin said. Every year I sit as a ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and see the request for military construction. These are very difficult decisions we make. In fact, at the end of the day, there are projects we desperately want to fund and the military wants us to desperately fund. We can't do it. And he is sweeping all of that aside just for his wall. It makes no sense. Not only do we have projects like Fort Bragg, the special operations, the hospital in Kentucky, we have to recognize how are we going to pay for about $3.7 billion of hurricane damage at Camp Lejeune. 
and about $5 billion of hurricane damage at Tyndall Air Force Base. Instead of spending $8 million on a wall, I think most people in the Department of Defense and most Americans said, let's fix Camp Lejeune and Tyndall Air Force Base. Those are the priorities. So we have to, and I hope our Republican colleagues sense this, we have to reject this proposal by the President. It makes no sense, and it ultimately undercuts the readiness of our military forces. And Senator Scott. <clears throat> Using military construction funds that Congress already appropriated for non-wall projects raises many questions about the Constitution, about military ready readiness, about what will happen to the one in five MILCON projects that won't go forward if the Department defunds them to build the President's wall. But here's the question that I'm the most concerned with. Is the Department of Defense going to undermine its reputation for being nonpartisan? Will it allow its credibility to be diminished if it moves forward with this scheme? The Department of Defense has a role in this. They have discretion. They have to say whether or not the construction of the wall is in furtherance of the mission. But its mission at the border is to support Customs and Border Protection. They're already in a backup role, a role that is not permanent and does not take place along wall that is already built. So that they're saying that they need a long-term construction project for a short-term mission. They're taking emergency measures for a crisis that doesn't exist this thing doesn't pass the smell test. Military construction is always done on a bipartisan basis. There is no drama when we appropriate funding for these projects because we know that people can agree, for instance, that Fort Greeley needs a new GBI uh, interceptor field to stop a long-range missile or that Fort Meade needs an access control facility to stop unauthor unauthorized vehicles from coming onto base or Fort Campbell needs a new middle school so that their military families don't have to send their kids to a school that has asbestos and lead-based paint. But if the Department of Defense keeps going down this road and politicizes the MILCON appropriations process, it will hurt military families, it will hurt military funding, it will hurt our troops, and it will hurt our democracy. Congress trusts that when the Department of Defense asks for money, it's because they need it. But that trust may fray, and that is why we are sending this letter. We have asked, we have called, we have written to them for an explanation, because it just doesn't make any sense. And Congress has an opportunity to stop this this week before it goes any further. Any questions? Is it your sense that the Pentagon and the White House know what projects they want to utilize and are hiding those? Well, I, I'm going to ask Senator Reid to join me in this response because we went to a breakfast last week uh, with Acting Secretary Shanahan, and he did say that a billion dollars was going to be transferred out of military pay and pensions for this purpose, and I think that has been explained to some extent. But then when it got into the projects, I, the, he only spoke in categories. There was no specific uh, project that they talked about it while we were there, but I'll defer to Jack. Maybe he remembers it differently. No, I think Dick's absolutely right that he avoided really specifics when it came to the projects. Now, uh, I think they have a list. Uh, perhaps they haven't committed to the paper, but they've got a list. The problem, I think, is that uh, if they don't, then they should be blamed for being incompetent, because if you're proposing to build a $8.6 million enterprise and you don't know where the money is coming from really, vaguely, you have an idea, that's not good management. Uh, I think they do know, but they're unwilling, I think, to say why, or at least share with us. We've asked for just the, cat, the, the available projects. They won't even share that. They have that list. They definitely have that list. So you think they're just waiting until after the vote? I think they're waiting until after yes. the vote. I think they could be waiting to piecemeal it out. If they need a certain amount of money, they'll declare this uh, a project sort of uh, rescinded and taken back. They could do it uh, bit by bit. Uh, but again, I think they're not being straightforward and genuine and transparent, and that's what we expect, Brian's point, that's what we expect from the military. Let me make one other point, too, because listening to Senator Schatz, General O'Shaughnessy was here. He's the NORTHCOM commander. He's responsible for the security, the military security of the border. 
he made it very clear there is no military threat from Mexico. So you have to ask yourself, why is the military spending $8.6 billion there when there's no military threat? When we have military threats all across the globe that are not being funded, uh, unfortunately. Let me say there's one other option, uh, a possibility in my mind. Uh, they may be waiting to see if the courts will allow them to proceed. Yeah. If the court is going to stop them and say the president does not have this authority, they spare themselves the embarrassment and tough political outcome of listing projects that are vulnerable to this cut. Yes. You all three voted for Shanahan to be deputy, deputy secretary. If he gets nominated for the top job from the acting level, is this the kind of thing where you would oppose him if this is still, you know, outstanding and unanswered? Yes. I'll look at it. <laughs> I will, yeah, first I think it's a, it raises a very legitimate question about uh, his conduct in terms of dealing with this whole issue, and it is an issue that will be looked at very closely in any hearings that are conducted if he is nominated. That's that not the case. shows incompetence at this point, potentially. I mean. Well, I, I, I think I suggested two scenarios. One, to, sort of... Uh, Mis misinformation or incompetence. So either way, that's a problem. But let me just flesh this out just a little bit because I think it's really important to, to describe the Department of Defense's role in this. It's not that they're purely downstream from the declaration. It's that under this declaration, the Joint Chiefs have to come up with a determination and a recommendation to acting secretary. Uh, and they have to determine that whatever wall is built um, using MILCON money is in furtherance of the mission on the border. Now, this is already circular because we're deploying troops to the border and now saying we're going to build a wall in support of the troops on the southern border. But I think part of the point I'd like to make crystal clear is that the Department of Defense is in an impossible dis uh, position. They really are in a tough position. They don't want to be political, but President Trump has forced them to be in this uh, problematic situation, and they cannot avoid it by failing to give us information about uh, which projects they're looking at cutting. As the only undecided juror, I'll take the next question. Have <laughs> you gotten reassurances from leadership that you're going to vote on a clean resolution from the House to join the emergency declaration, or is it going to be an amended resolution? Uh, we have a couple versions uh, that are being considered this week, and I don't know if a final decision has been made on that uh, exactly. The House version, of course, may have been compromised by the motion to recommit. And just as a follow-up, if it was the House version, where do you think the votes are? I mean, you're hearing rumblings that it's north of 60. Do you think that's true? It's, it's entirely possible. I mean, I, I try to check the body language and uh, between the lines, and the statement from the White House yesterday suggested that they were losing ground. Uh, so it could be many more than four Republicans. Senator German, Senate Republicans apparently are continuing to try to look for a way out of this emergency uh, vote or by getting the White House to change its position somehow, any number of ways. What are Republicans talking with you about, you know, maybe trying to involve Democrats in this? Is there any discussion going back and forth? Or are they just trying to work this out on their own side? Uh, it's their problem. Uh, with 84 votes having been cast, as uh, Senator Reid brought up, uh, it's their problem. And they, they many of them realize it's, it's not just a tactical issue and the credibility of the Department of Defense. It gets down to a constitutional question about the authority of any president, including this one. Yeah, I just add, nobody's buying a side-by-side. -side. Nobody's going to allow this vote to be defined by some other <coughs> attempt to amend a statute. Um, it, you know, there may be moments where if there's a gotcha vote, a side-by-side -side provides some cover, uh, but this is a question of where you stand as it relates to the constitutional authorities of the legislative branch, and what they're working on is purely a distraction. Yeah, I think just, just one other point, too, is this whole issue injects constitutional issues about the role of Congress, not just in terms of declaring the emergency in this resolution, but we're hearing that in order to fund some of these, uh, some of the efforts on the border, they're going to take money from some programs we've appropriated and authorized without our permission, essentially, ignoring Congress. So that's another issue the Republicans have to worry about. Are they setting up a 
precedent that where a president can just move money around in the defense budget without any kind of contact with Congress. And they are also running in the possibility that at the end of the year, if they move all this money to the border, they won't be able to reprogram funds for other critical military needs. We always, at the end of the year, have requests for refueling submarines, for refurbishing a facility. They could run out of that statutory authority to reprogram. So there's a lot of issues that the Republicans have to consider and we have to consider. So this, this sets off tremendous complications, both constitutionally and practically, for the, the Congress and the President. Last question. Yes, sir. I am not the ranking Democrat on the Aviation Subcommittee. Um, uh, but obviously it has imp implications for Hawaii and, and for tourism generally. Um, we're waiting on the FAA. I know um, obviously they're, they're in the middle of uh, some analysis. Um, it's worrisome, um, but we have to defer to our experts. I think that's fair. 